Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining me. And ultimately, thank you so much for raising your presence here on my channel. I truly enjoy that you came. Alright, so welcome back. Let's get started. So today, or somewhere around this week, is my month lock update that I will be informing you guys on how it's been going, uh, the struggles, <laughs> and what that feels like and what I've changed uh, thus far. So if you got some tea, if you got a snack, if you got, just grab it so we can get started. I'm going to grab some coffee, even though it's like three in the afternoon. I love it. I get the flavor out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, where do I start? What's well? Let's first look at my hair. Let's look at where it's at. As you guys can see, it's dyed. Okay, and we'll talk about that. Okay, but I'm getting a little close so you can actually see what's going on. As you can see, I've kind of retwisted, but I don't know. I feel like they're gonna end up doing what they want anyway because you can still see some of the new growth. Um, I don't know. So first, let's talk about why I dyed my hair. Usually, you hear stylists say, oh, don't style your hair. Or, loctician stylists, you know, you guys know what I'm talking about. They'll tell you, don't style your hair as often when you have star locks. Don't bleach your hair when you have star locks. And as you guys know, I have eczema, so I was very skeptical about even doing anything that caused it to be chemically treated to my hair but because the dye or the chemical or the bleach was not directed to my scalp it did not um, affect me as much um, as it would is if I dyed my whole head which I'm never gonna say never but probably ain't gonna happen because I don't want my hair to fall out <laughs> but so if you want to know what dyes I use or what's a good dye to use to bleach your hair I would go with the ions um, it's at Sally Beauty just ask about the ion bleaching dye only thing about that it's a 20, 20 volume developer and it's very slow which means you're not gonna get this brightening effect and you're barely gonna see a change um, or you're gonna see it lightening um, period so I had to get um, use the box dye. I used Dark and Lovely, which seemed to work perfectly for my hair. And it was a 25 volume developer. As long as I don't go to like 30 or 40, which is very fast acting, very strong, very intensive um, chemicals, then I'm okay. So I stayed in the 20 to 25 range. And so I went with the Ion first. It didn't it didn't produce the effect that I wanted it to. So I went to box dye which was dark and lovely fade and resist um I think it's like blonde dye and this is the effect that I got um do I wish it could have been a little bit lighter yes but am I am I okay am I satisfied with what I have of course I'm I'm forever always going to be grateful for the things that I have um and think that I don't it'll come to me later on so Again, when stylists say, don't style your hair, don't dye your hair because of this, because of that, let me tell you something. Do what you want. Do what you so shall please. Okay? Just as long as you're taking good care of your hair, it shouldn't matter what you're doing to your hair. Now, some stylists may look at this video and be like, oh, she's wrong, she's wrong, but it's your hair, and you know your hair better than anybody. You get what I'm saying? So... You know, um, and they say that don't style it, don't bleach it, because it causes tension on your hair, on your roots, on your strands, which can cause the lock to um, come apart or thin or just depends. But again, it's on how you take care of your hair. If you want to style your hair but don't style it every single day, go for it. Um, if you want to dye your hair but don't want to dye your roots, go for it. Or if you want to dye your roots, you want to dye your whole head, go for it. But it's all in how you take care of your hair. As long as, now, I will say, when you dye your hair of any sort, you want to make sure that you condition your hair. Now, don't get this twisted with regular conditioner. You do not have to sit 
and let conditioner sit in your hair for 30 to 40 minutes just to get that moisture in. Honey, get you a bottle of Carol's Daughter Black Vanilla Leave-In Conditioner. As you can see, I'm, I'm this much through with it. Get you some leave-in conditioner and you'll be set. That's all you really need. You don't need to condition, you don't need to have these products in your because your hair is not loose natural so it's not going to take to it as well as it would and that's why you have to sit under the um under the cap or in the conditioner for a very extensive amount of time which is not necessary if you can do just if it can do just the same um work as a leave-in conditioner some people may say well leave-in conditioner cause buildup well, it just depends on the one you use. You know, if you're using a leave-in milk, then of course those products are a little bit thicker. They're a little bit more creamier. So you're going to get that moisture retention um, at a higher intensive rate. But if you get a leave-in conditioner that is water-based, you can shake it up. You can move it around, such as this Carol's Daughter Black Vanilla. It does the same and it smells good and it's lightweight and it's not going to weigh your hair down and it's not going to cause as much moisture buildup as you would as if you used a regular conditioner, a uh, milk conditioner, um, and the list goes on. So the point of the matter is do what you will with your hair but take care of your hair. And, and personally I feel as long as you're taking good care of your hair, who cares? You can put it up if you could put it up how many ever times you want to but you know just make sure you're watching your hair paying attention to your hair are your ends a little bit drier are your roots um, breaking you know stuff like that you pay attention to when you dye your hair when you um, put your hair in styles when it's short or when it's starter locks um, baby locks as some people may say as well another thing I want to get to is because we're not gonna spend all day just on one topic sis <laughs> Another thing I want to get to is when people say, oh, um, don't shampoo your hair. And I, and honestly, I really thought this was a fallacy because I was like, really, people say that? People really say don't shampoo your hair? But I have, I went to a loctician just to see how much she would charge to retwist my hair. And the only reason I did that is because, now, I'm not having nobody do my hair unless I just absolutely, positively, ultimately do not want to do it. But I went to her just to get some insight. You want to know what she told me? She said, oh, you don't need to do anything in your hair. Don't shampoo it. Don't do, don't do a single thing to your hair because your hair is still... Um, in braids or in what is it plaits so it's not fully locked yet I, in my mind I'm like are you kidding me <laughs> like really though you know so the fact that she said that immediately knew, sent a red flag in my head say oh I don't need to be with you because you don't know what you're doing okay or if you don't know you don't know much about locks because Anyway, shampooing and not shampooing is a whole nother topic that I'll get into, but just for the front of the matter is, um, when you, having somebody tell you not shampoo your hair, it's just basically telling them to keep it dirty. When you have eczema, when you go to the gym, hence the sports bra, y'all, I'm getting in shape all year long, 2020, let's go. <laughs> Sorry. But, um, what was I saying? <laughs> when you're working out, when you're, you know, constantly on the go, and you're sweating all the time, your, your hair is, you know, drier than normal, you're going to need to wash your hair. You're going to need to put some type of water mixture in your hair. Um, so when you hear someone say, don't shampoo your hair, or don't wash your hair, <laughs> Right? That's what I'm saying. The product that I the product that I want to get into next is this Jamaica Jamaican Mango and Lime Maximum Relief No More Itch Growth Spray. Y'all, if you have eczema, 
I know there's been so much flack about this brand because, you know, the guy, he sold his brand. It hasn't been right since. But this formula is still good. Um, I enjoy it. I like it. My scalp loves it. Um, and the fact that I have eczema is really beneficial to my hair because my hair does get dry fast. And when it gets dry, it starts to inflame and it starts to itch. And when it does that, of course, the locks become messed up, the whole nine, and your hair is just a hot mess. So I will say that this spray has been a gift to me. Let me zoom in. So if you're someone that does uh, have eczema or you do have a dry scalp or you do have an itchy scalp for whatever reason, if it may be dandruff or some other reason, um, I would say give that a try. It's, it's at Sally's for about $5 at the hair store. I'm not sure, but you know, every retail store has its different prices. I just know Sally's, it was about $5 I paid for it. Um, and so far, so good. I've been loving it. It, re it has uh, menthol in it, so it kind of relieves your scalp a little bit. It says it has a little bit of moisture in it, but I still use my... Um, Carol's Daughter Black Vanilla Leave-In Conditioner just because, again, my ends are dyed and you want to, excuse me, you want to take care of the oldest part of your hair, which is your ends, so, um, that's what I use. And I still use a little bit of my oil, but just a little bit, guys. You don't need a whole lot of products when you're messing with locks or when you're building your lock formation, um, just because you can cause a lot of build up in your strands and it just won't be pretty it'll be messy and it will it won't even look right and you won't feel healthy so again um this is honestly if you use this if you try it out you really don't only need it on your hair this is just an estimate this is not to tell you what to do but this you only need it on your hair for about one to every three days um or once a day if you if you really have uh, that bad itch but it really does go away um, after a certain amount of time that you put it in your hair. So, um, what else do I have to say? Well, again, um, so I, so you know how when you first do your starter locks, you know, you go to the hairdresser or the stylist or the lock tician, whatever, or you may be even doing it yourself, you usually retwist it after two weeks, and then after that you prolong it. You keep prolonging it a week, um, later three weeks, four weeks, six weeks, whatever, once a month, um, however you may choose. So I re tried to retwist my hair after two weeks, and this has just only been just about a day of retwisting, and as you can see, you can still see the new growth. Um, of course, it's, you can see a little bit of it twisted, but you can still see the new growth in my hair. So I think my hair wants to be more on the freeform side, just because that's what I went when I first had my set of locks, but now that my locks are new and they're very different, I feel they want to go more on the freeform, semi-freeform. My hair is telling me freeform, but honey, freeform, I don't know if I can do the look. That's a lot. You really, you, freeform is free, free, free. Just letting your hair be, don't touch it, don't manipulate it, don't do nothing. I don't know if I can do that because I like my hair a certain way. So it might it might be doing semi-free form, but I don't know if I'll be retwisting it or palm rolling it. I know I'll be, um, like if there's a loose strand somewhere, like for example, this is part of my edges, but let's just say this was loose strand that needed to be right here. I would just wrap it around that's that piece of um, lock and just braid it again or twist it again all the way down maybe palm roll it to finish it off that's probably what I'm gonna do start doing with my hair just whenever it needs maintenance um, because my hair does not like to be uh, retwisted it I don't know I mean I know if I force it it definitely can do that but I don't know if I necessarily want to force my hair to do something it don't want to do um, and like I said, I know a little bit something about locks, so if my hair, I'm not going to force my hair, if my hair doesn't want to do it, it's not going to look good when it, um, ends off, it's not going to feel good, and it's not going to have longevity with the style and just with the health of it, so, you know, 
forcing your hair to do something that it doesn't want to do can cause thinning, can cause breakage, can cause friction. A lot of things, right? So that's just a, that's not what I want. So I just want the best for my hair, um, best for myself, of course, because don't let your hair control you. You control your hair, but you know, just don't force anything that's un or seems unnatural. Okay? Well, guys, that has been. I need to wrap up this video. That has been a time that we have shared together. I really appreciate you stopping by, coming to see what fun stuff I had to talk about now that we are at month lock. I try I try to show you guys along my journey because I know I like to look at people that have um, locks and I like to see their beginning you know, stages. And a lot of people don't share their beginning stages. They just go straight to month four or month six and we're like, I want to know the little struggle that happened between there. So, um, you know, so I will be showing you guys a little of my struggle or <laughs> let's rephrase that, right? Locks are not a struggle. They're just part of your journey and it's part of your growth journey. It's part of your spiritual journey, your health, everything that just needs to go natural. Alright, so thank you guys again for stopping by. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Like this video if you like this type of content. And I will see you guys in my next video.